I'm Richard Hotchkiss and um, I'm a language consultant. Uh, I'm originally from Newcastle in the northeast of England. I've been in Holland for a long time and I understand the problems that uh, Dutch business people have with English. Why do Dutch people need to improve their English? People ask me. I think your, your relationship with your client is always better if you can communicate uh, in a smoother manner. People ask me what can you help me with and I will go well. Uh, for instance, I can help you expand your vocabulary in Dutch here at Vorderskab. That's what I find a lot of Dutch business people have trouble with. They can't quite find the right word and in my courses I do, we read a lot of articles on a weekly basis, we make vocabulary lists, we practice expanding our vocabulary. Writing emails is really important these days in communicating within a, a global society. Dutch people write reasonable emails, but there are often just those little mistakes in your first impression by the client is, that's not quite right. So what I do is, I brush up your emails by looking at what you've already written, we keep what's good and we take out what's not so good. So after the 10 week period you see an immense improvement in the quality of emails that my clients send to their business partners throughout the world. Intercultural awareness is really important these days too because it, it's not just about the language but it's about the sensitivities we have towards people from different cultures. As a British person having lived in the Netherlands a long time I realize in my own case that it, just because people speak a reasonable level of English doesn't mean that they in, understand you culturally. It's not just about the British I'll be talking about but how, how you approach work with Asian people, how with possibly with German people, with French people, how, how their sensitivities alter so I'll I just touch on the subject of intercultural awareness. Self-confidence. I think that's what I really help my clients the most with. Obviously their fluency improves, their pronunciation, they have a better vocabulary, uh, their grammatical knowledge is, is expanded, but the self-confidence thing is what really counts and I've been told many times by my clients at the end of one of my 10 week courses two hours a week Richard the great thing is I'm much more self-confident I, I try and do a little bit of work on pronunciation just to make you sound a little less Dutch and possibly a little more English or American well not American because I'm not American am I a little bit more British then possibly I really don't like the Dutch pronunciation of Bell Company. So by the time I've been to your company, everybody will say company instead of company. Yes, because I'll be making a comeback. Or will I be making a comeback? A comeback, I think. Dutch people make a lot of mistakes uh, in the fact that they think they're speaking English but they're not. It's called Dunglish. If Dunglish is quite good, it's quite funny. Uh, for the Dutch people think it's funny and British and American and other non-Dutch speakers just think it's a bit strange because they're actually speaking English but they're using a Dutch idiomatic expression that they know but they're literally translating it from Dutch into English. What about this one? Earth gas is important to the Dutch economy sounds right doesn't it? What do they really mean? Well what they actually mean is natural gas is important to the Dutch economy. I always have a douche before I go to work. You don't really want to think very deeply into what a douche means in American or English English but I think the correct answer would be I always have a shower before I go to work. Well I hope we can win from them. Well 
I think I know what you mean, but I think it actually should be, I think we can beat them. That's another example of Dunglish. Okay, uh, a great example of Dunglish is uh, Mr. Jan Rietman, a Dutch TV presenter, interviewing uh, Hans van Breukelen, your famous goalie, goalkeeper, uh, for an international broadcast, and so he was speaking in English. So at the end of the interview, uh, Jan Rietman says to Hans van Breukelen, Hans, let's go to the canteen. Uh, I, I have a beer too good from you. Which is not quite right, is it? I think it should be Hans, let's go to the canteen. You owe me a beer. But that's Dunglish. Okay, well, I'm originally uh, from uh, Newcastle upon Tyne, or Newcastle, as people in Newcastle say, but people in Holland say Newcastle, but I say Newcastle. It's in, right up in the north of England. But I've been in Holland for a long, long time. I've been a, a teacher in a secondary school. I'm also a lecturer at the, the School of Journalism here in Utrecht. So I've got uh, quite a lot of uh, experience. Uh, I've been running my business since 2000, so it's quite a long time now. This is my uh, this is my favourite shirt, Newcastle United. I'm one of their biggest fans. So in my lessons, I always learn who, what everybody's favourite football team is, and we always have a little discussion in English at the beginning of the lesson about whose team has won or not. So sometimes I'm a little sad on Monday morning, but recently I've been very happy. So here we go, the favourite English footballer's item to kiss the badge. There we go. I enjoyed that. <laughs>